Hi everyone, I'm doing a video today on esters, carboxylic acids and alcohols and I'm going to help you work out how to produce the ester using a carboxylic acid and the alcohol. I'm going to actually cut to explain everything at some point so I can actually draw the equations to show you but to begin with I'm going to give you an overview. First of all it's super important that you understand that families of compounds exist and therefore they have similar properties and different families include things like the alkanes, remember they have a general formula of CnH2n plus 2. Alkenes, they have a general formula of CnH2n and remember they all have a carbon-carbon double bond which means they're unsaturated. Another family is alcohols, they have a special group called OH on the end. Carboxylic acids, they're another group you need to know about, their special group which we call the functional group is COOH. And then lastly, esters, they have a special functional group, which is COO. So there are lots of different families of compounds, and we call these different families homologous series. And if you were to define this, all you need to say is families of compounds with the same functional group. And like I alluded to before, it's this functional group which gives it specific chemical properties, and means that it doesn't matter how many carbon atoms they have, they'll all behave in a similar way. So go back to organic chemistry and make sure, first of all, that you're happy with things like meth, eth, prope, but, because it's important that you know how many carbon atoms this corresponds to. Remember, meth means one carbon atom, eth means two carbon atoms, prope means three carbon atoms, and but means four carbon atoms. So when you've got those all sorted, it will really help you with these other homologous series. So, the first homologous series we're going to look at is alcohol. So remember I told you the functional group is OH. Now when it comes to drawing the displayed formula of these compounds, it's really important that you remember that carbon always, always forms four bonds, oxygen always forms two bonds, and hydrogen always forms one bond, because that way you'll stop screwing it up when you draw it out. So let's now skip to explain everything, and I'm going to draw the first four alcohols out. The first alcohol is going to be methanol. So let's start by drawing the central carbon atom. I know that the functional group is OH, so they're going to go there, and I've obeyed my rule, which is that oxygen has two bonds. And then I'm going to finish off the molecule by writing, filling in the hydrogens. So actually, here's the displayed formula, and I can also write it like this very easily. Let's look at the next alcohol, ethanol. Let's begin by drawing the two carbons, the OH group, and then fill in the hydrogens. I'm going to draw out the formula again, CH3, CH2, OH. Third alcohol is propanol. That means three carbons. The OH group, which I'm going to put here. Fill in the hydrogens, and we're done. If they ask you to draw a ring around the functional group, remember that all you need to do is draw a ring around there. So you've just seen how the alcohols are drawn, and now we need to move on to the carboxylic acids, and I'm going to again skip and show you what those will look like. So the carboxylic acids, the first carboxylic acid is methanoic acid. Meth meaning one carbon, so I'm going to draw the carbon first of all. Remember the functional group of, a meth of methanoic acid is COOH, and the first O is a double bond to the carbon, and then the second one is like the alcohol, so it's OH. And now remember to double check how many bonds carbon has already. Well, it's got three, so actually I only need to draw one hydrogen on to complete the molecule. So its formula is HCOOH. Next up, ethanoic acid. That is C to C. Let's draw the functional group again. And... Double check the bonds, okay, the second carbon's happy because it's got four bonds, and then I'm just going to complete the first carbon like this, so its formula is CH3COOH, and then for my last example, propanoic acid. That's three carbons. Let's draw the functional group. Complete the molecule, making sure that carbon has four bonds. Perfect, done. And again, if I wanted to circle the functional group, I would circle that bit here. Remember an ester is just when an alcohol reacts with a carboxylic acid and effectively a molecule of water is lost. And where that H2O is lost, those atoms join together to form the ester. Here's the general equation on how you form an ester. So you start with a carboxylic acid, you add an alcohol to it, and in the presence of a sulfuric acid catalyst, it's important that you remember that, 
and it will produce an ester and water. So here's an example. We've got ethanoic acid plus methanol. So I just told you that it's going to lose a water molecule in the process. So I'm going to put water here. Now to work out the name of the ester. Right, the beginning of the name comes from the alcohol and it will be anything like methyl, ethyl, propyl. It will sound like that, but you've got to work out the exact name. And like I said, it comes from the alcohol, which in this case is methanol. So the start of the ester's, ester's name will be methyl. And then the last part always ends in O8. And that will, again, depend this time on the carboxylic acid. So because it's ethanoic acid, the name of the ester will be ethanoate. So the answer altogether is methyl ethanoate. Let's draw both parts. So the ethanoic acid is two carbons, double bond O, OH. Let's complete the molecule nice and quickly. Methanol is one carbon, has an OH group. Complete the molecule again. Remember that the water molecule is lost, so it's lost from here. And then you quite simply need to join those molecules together, together to get your final answer, which will look like this, if I can squeeze it in OK. Oh, it's going to be tricky. OK, and this ginormous molecule is, of course, methyl ethanoate. Now, esters are volatile. This means that they evaporate easily, and that explains why they're very good for use in perfumes. They also have a strong scent, so a second reason they, why they can be used in perfumes. Alcohol, now we know that we drink this. We've learned previously that you can make alcohol by fermentation or hydration of ethene. The other thing about alcohol is it's a very good solvent, and that means it can dissolve solutes or dissolve solids very easily because it's a very good liquid at doing that. So you'll find it in a lot of um, inks, for example, and permanent markers. You need to know the reactions of alcohol with oxygen. So remember, the first one here is combustion. Alcohol reacts with oxygen, so you can burn it to release a lot of heat energy as it's a fuel, and it will produce carbon dioxide and water. You can also oxidise alcohol using an oxidising agent, something like potassium dichromate 6. And what that will do is it will turn alcohol into a carboxylic acid rather than carbon dioxide and water. You also find that this process happens very passively and naturally with alcohol left out. So if you had a bottle of wine, for example, and you leave it out and expose it to some oxygen in the air, what will happen is the microbes in the air will cause the alcohol to convert itself to a carboxylic acid. Hence why if you sniff a bottle of alcohol after it's been open for a while, it will smell very vinegary, and that's because the ethanol will have been converted to ethanol acid. Carboxylic acids now, let's, let's look a bit at them. Remember that they behave very similarly to other acids that you met before, like hydrochloric, sulfuric, and nitric acids, and that means they'll react with metal carbonates, metal hydroxides, metal oxides, and just straightforward metals in a very similar manner. Check out my video on acids and bases, which I'll link here if you're less certain of what I'm saying. But all I'm, I'm going to give you an example, and really all that happens is if you had ethanoic acid and you reacted it with, let's say, sodium hydroxide, what you're going to be producing here is sodium ethanoate plus water. So that's not too difficult. And then if we take another example, so we're going to take propanoic acid, we're going to react it with lithium carbonate, and this time you're going to be producing lithium propanoate plus carbon dioxide plus water. So it's not too tricky, you just need to learn those reactions. So I hope this video has been helpful. Just remember to learn how to draw your esters, how to draw the individual carboxylic acids, the alcohols, and then learn some of these properties that I've just been talking about now, the fact that alcohol undergoes combustion, oxidation, and that carboxylic acids react in a normal way with metal carbonates, hydroxides, and oxides. And I really hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you'll comment and subscribe too. So see you soon. Bye. So here's some questions involving what we've just been talking about. Question two. This question is about organic compounds. Wine contains ethanol. There's its formula. Complete the displayed structure of ethanol. I can't believe they've actually given me the formula, which makes this question basically stupid because they've given me the answer. But I'm just going to complete it for the sake of it. Remembering that carbon has four bonds and oxygen has two and hydrogen has one. Next up, wine left in a glass for several days turns sour. The sour taste is caused by ethanoic acid. Complete the sentences. The ethanoic acid is produced from a reaction between ethanol and oxygen. This type of reaction is oxidation. 2b. Propyl ethanoate, a fragrance, can be produced by reacting ethanoic acid with an alcohol. Propyl ethanoate is a member of a series of organic compounds. 
the members of the series all have the same functional group. The displayed structure of propyl epinoate is draw a ring around the functional group for this series on the displayed structure of propyl epinoate. So remember the functional group of an ester is COO, so you need to draw a ring around that. Now it's asking to, for us to name the series of organic, organic compounds with this functional group, and the answer here is ester. 2B, the alcohol used to make propyl ethanoate has the formula, blah, blah, blah. Name this alcohol. Right, you could have worked that out from the beginning of the ester's name, noting that it's propyl, which means it has to be propanol, or similarly, you could look at the formula, which has three carbons in it, and therefore, again, it has to be propanol. Right, I hope you found this helpful. Um, I can't seem to find any more questions. If you have any more questions, just send them to me and I'll answer them. See ya!